Okay, so if you want to really guilt your relatives this Christmas season, make them something. Okay, don't buy them something, make them something. It's cheap, they won't know how cheap, and they'll be so moved that you, that you made them something. I mean, even if it's ugly, you made it, you know? Even if it didn't cost you anything, they don't, you know, they've got to feel grateful, okay? So it's just an interesting way of manipulating circumstances in your own favor. So I'm gonna just show you really quickly how to do pyrography. That's the name for wood burning, okay? Except we're not really wood burning because look, I'm, I'm working on a gourd right now, making arcane symbols on a gourd. And you can also use, see here's wood, that's what people usually do. See, I've got like this like little lacy kind of, uh, what do you call that, ivy sort of thing, except that they're shaped like lilac leaves, so that's just wrong. But your relatives won't care, they won't know. What do they know about horticulture? Okay, so that's good, that's good, that's wood. Cork, you buy it in sheets, that's really fun to work with. Except it's gonna be curly, like this piece I just cut. So you just iron it, you just iron it, you get an iron, you iron it. And it, it flattens right out. Well, it doesn't at first, it, it sort of sucks up in a really distorted way, but then you iron it on the other side, and then it's equalized and it becomes flat. So cork's really fun to work with. Look, look how beautiful, see there's that, wrong shaped leaf ivy again. <laughs> it's an aberration. Mutant ivy is what I call it. And then on the other side, I tried a little uh, stenciling. You see that's that bit there. And then I tried to do the, um, something in Latin just to look like I'm more intellectual than I actually am. Laborara est orara. To work is to pray. Except I spelt laborara wrong, so I had to like put a little r there. That's just but that's you, you know, come on, your relatives will so know. Like, make a mistake on purpose, and then they'll know that you were trying really hard. Okay, and then ch check this out. This is a cork uh, coaster. You know, if, if your family are drinkers, I think coasters are a pretty good bet. And then this is another, this is made of leather. See, it's got one design on one side, and then you always want to stabilize leather around the edge on the wrong side, because otherwise it tends to curl up at the edges. You'll learn all this as you go. Here's another wood one I was just working on when you came, okay? This is like a light switch. You can buy wooden light switch, what do they call it? Plates, plates. So uh, it's gonna be a really cool haunted tree. Okay, so if you're not artistic, you might wanna use a stencil. You can get br uh, brass or stainless steel stencils at a craft shop. And that's kinda cool, because that's what I used on this thing. You just slap it down and then, you know, you, you want to tape it on there, and then it, it makes it really easy. Now, can we just talk about the tools that you're going to use here? Oh, here's something else so cool. Is that cool? Look, I did my boots. Well, I did one, one, one boot. You could always just do one boot of your family's boots. Like, everybody would just wake up on Christmas morning, and one of their boots would have decorations on it. That would be good. When you're doing pyrography, pyrography, it's hard to say when you have an overbite. I have a bit of an overbite. Um, pyrography can be done with a, a fairly inexpensive tool. This is like 30 bucks, and it comes with seven different tips. I happen to have the lilac or mutant ivy pattern on right now. So this has two settings, which is kind of nice. So if you're working with something that doesn't need as much heat, like a gourd, you can turn it down to a, a lower heat. I think it goes between 500 degrees Fahrenheit and 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is fairly warm. This is a kind of a cool little thing. It's got a it's called a third hand thing, so that if you want it to hold your work for you, like a little obedient robot, it'll do that. <laughs> Just, I have, I own a robot, you can say to people. I own a robot. Yeah. They don't have to know it only costs 30 bucks, okay? And then this unit over here, if you really get into pyrography, is um, called the razor tip, and it's available at specialty places like Lee Valley Tools. And um, look, it's got really intense little tips. See this? It's like razor sharps. It heats up in about eight seconds to red hot if you have it on the highest setting. So it's like 189 bucks, but what a cheap freaking hobby that's so fun. You won't believe it. You won't believe it. Look, I'm drawing things, okay? So anyway, that's a good little tip. And then there's this other little tip over here because of course we have two um, handsets and I can flip the heat from one to the other so I don't have to wait for a tip to cool before I change to another tip. And it's got an adjustable dial. Now you'll notice I have this fan on and that's because smoke wants to go right up your nose when you're working on this stuff. If you're going to cut uh, leather, 
you really want to get a pair of uh, electric scissors because it's hard to cut. It's really hard to cut. And also, if you're wood burning on leather, well, leather burning really, uh, try to get vegetable tanned leather. It doesn't have such things as chromium and arsenic in the tanning process, so it won't go up your nose. It's not very nice to breathe those things. See, look. And it sounds kind of like your dad's shaver, so you get that feeling of also being manly. I love that. See how fast that is? So, and also, sometimes you've stored your leather badly and it might be wrinkly. So all you have to do is like with the cork, just iron it. Okay, so you'll have fun with pyrography. It's really, it's a, the, just the most natural thing to, to play with. It, it's, look, look how fast it goes. Just drawing away little circles and spirals. Also, you can use the iron worker's secret if you're not particularly good at freehand. You know what the secret is? You just draw C's and S's. Like I would draw two C's like this and put them back to back and then I would draw some S's above that and you end up with kind of an ornate ironwork kind of pattern. And one final little thing, you can get design books that have all kinds of like Victorian stuff in them. If you want to do Victorian patterns, they'll give you an idea. And you can always trace it onto the, um, you can't exactly trace onto leather, but you can take the paper and like press hard with a pencil and then you'll see the design. It'll be sort of pressed into your leather. Okay, so have really fun with pyrography. Pyrography. Okay, say it with me. Pyrography. Very nice. <laughs>